Minamata disease, also sometimes referred to as the Tiso Minamata disease, the implication of which I will discuss later in this dissertation, is perhaps one of the best prime examples of tragedy of the commons. Factory takes advantage of a river in a bay and uses it to deposit waste to increase profit returns. The environmental damage was catastrophic and widespread, as a law of unintended consequences communed with Mother Nature in retaliation to man's environmental ignorance. Lives were lost, millions needed compensation, and irreversible environmental damage occurred. I will now detail a bit of the factory's history before I get into some of the particulars of why this was such a tragedy. Now, this chemical factory was founded by the Chiso Corporation in early 1908, and it was placed along the Shirani Bay, which is adjacent to the northwest corner of Minamata City in Japan. And Minamata City is located in southwestern Japan. It's one of the very extremities of Japan. And um, this was also placed along the Minamata River. So the factory, as you see here, was placed in between the river and the bay. And this chemical plant at first manufactured fertilizers, but later as Japan's industrialization became full swing, it produced other useful chemicals such as acetylene, acetylaldehyde, acetic acid, octanol, and vinyl chloride. Now, pollutants were released from the plant as wastewater straight into Minamata Bay, and that's the environmental part of this. And of course, Minamata Bay is a rich fishing and a farming village, therefore when the water was polluted, it had a dramatic effect on the main resource of Minamata. Fisheries had lower catches than ever before, and compensation agreements eventually were resigned between Chiso Corps and the fishing industries throughout the world. Now, the main product of the factory was acetylaldehyde, and the production levels of this compound in 1932 were 210 puns per year, which is quite a lot. And this grate grew quite alarmingly, and by 1951, 6,000 tons of this stuff were being produced, and only to cap this off at 45,000 tons in 1960. This stuff wouldn't have been so bad or had such a bad environmental impact if the synthesis of the chemical as, as a mercury catalyst, or mercury sulfate more specifically, wasn't used. Um, some of the byproducts of the reaction then underwent a cyclical cascade of reactions which further modified the mercury into a methyl mercury compound, which is perhaps the most toxic form of mercury discovered as of yet. <laughs> It has a lethality ratio of roughly 50%, so it's not very friendly stuff. Its chemical makeup is a methyl group, which is a carbon covalently bonded to three hydrogen atoms, which is then bonded to a mercury ion. And of course, the factory then decided to dump the waste into Minamata Bay, more specifically Hiyakin Harbor, and that started in 1932 and it culminated in 1961. Mercury owes its toxicity in the human body to protein and amino acid recognition. Methylmercury binds to a free cysteine, which the body then recognizes as, as methionine, which allows it to readily diffuse across the blood-brain barrier, and this contributes to the half-life of methylmercury in the body is about 50 days, which is quite a long time. Now, when methylmercury came into contact with nearby waterways, it was methylated by bacteria and then subsequently ingested by fish. Methylmercury in the water and sediments is taken up by tiny animals and plants known as plankton. Small fishes eat large quantities of plankton over time, and large predatory fish consume many smaller fish, accumulating methylmercury in their tissues. The older and larger the fish, therefore, the greater the potential for high mercury levels in their bodies. Fish are then caught and eaten by humans and animals, causing methylmercury to accumulate in their tissues. The mercury levels in these fish bioaccumulated until mercury levels were significant enough to affect humans, a concentration in the water just above 2 kilograms of mercury per ton of sediment. Um, local villagers then ate the fish and began to exhibit signs of neurologic damage, such as visual loss, extremity numbness, hearing loss, ataxia, and dysarrhythmia. Now here comes the fun part, the actual discovery of the disease, which resulted in a bunch of also just major obfuscation and confusion. Um, nobody really knew what was going on, and there was just a whole lot of chaos going around. But to begin, the ultimate realization of just how terrible the factory's impact on the government or the environment was was finally understood when human beings started dying. Never mind the thousands of fish killed at the mouth of the river that nearly destroyed a bay and the fishing companies which harvested it. And thus the economy of the city was also affected too. But human life was finally beginning to feel the consequences of environmental degradation too. Now to begin, a five-year-old girl was investigated at the Chiso Corporation Factory Hospital in April 1956. And the physicians were puzzled by her symptoms. She had difficulty walking, difficulty speaking, and convulsions. Similar reports of these symptoms were then received, and a house-to-house -house investigation of the illness concluded in eight more similar cases just along that same block. The doctors reported to the public that an epidemic of an unknown disease to the central nervous system was prevalent, which officially coined the term Minamata disease. However, the causal agent was left to be identified. The local government and scientific entrepreneurs formed the Strange Disease Countermeasures Community, and owing to the localized nature of disease spread, they suspected that the disease was contagious, so the houses were then disinfected and the patients isolated. But this is where it really gets fun. Cats and other small animals within the same area began exhibiting very strange behavior, such as jumping into the river, having convulsions, going mad, and just straight dying. Local is then called the disease the, disease, the cat dancing disease. 
And as the realization dawned, the researchers lo- realized the outbreak was quite a bit more serious than they had originally anticipated. Imagine that. Researchers from the nearby Kumamoto University came to help, and by October 1956, 40 patients had been identified, 14 of whom had died, with an LD ratio of 37%. It was observed by the new researchers that these outbreaks occurred in fishing communities along the bay, and there's no surprises here. Um, Thus, they began to suspect some sort of food poisoning, probably the various shellfish and other small varieties of fish that were staple food of the area. Cats who had the same symptoms of patients ate these fish, so it was logical to assume that there was some deed some sort of food poisoning going on here. They then postulated that some sort of heavy metal was ingested through the consumption of these foods. As soon as the researchers were sure that the heavy metal was a source of the problem, eyes immediately turned to the Chiso factory. It was well known by this time that the factory dumped its industrial waste into the nearby waterways, but determining which heavy metal it was was the agent was also difficult. It took a British neurologist, Douglas McAlpine, to suggest that the symptoms experienced by the de- disease were similar to organic mercury poisoning to symptoms. Thus, further tests were conducted. The levels of mercury were then investigated in the bay, and researchers were shocked at how widespread the infection was, which occurred in fish, shellfish, and sludge throughout the bay, and descended in concentration leading out to the sea. Hair samples were then collected from infected individuals, which reported a max of 705 parts per, million, parts per million in symptomatic patients, 191 parts per million in unsymptomatic patients, and 4 parts per million in those living outside the Minamata Bay area. Throughout the flora of the region, a 2 kilogram mask of mercury was recorded per ton of sediment, and a level which would make mining mercury economically viable. How fleet. Found in a desperate situation now, the Chiso factory knew what damage it was causing, yet to avoid further scrutiny by nearby scientists, it instead dumped its waste directly into the Minamata River. Holy moly. That was smart. Fish began to die all over again, and communities up and down the river also underwent outbreaks of the disease. In further desperation, the factory hired its own scientist to conduct research on its waste. He fed food from water known to have wastewater in it to cats in over a 78-day testing day testing period, 400 cats experienced symptoms and eventual death, which confirmed an organic poisoning caused by the factory's wastes. Chiso then promptly hid the results of the experiment from the public and forced Hoskawa, the research aide, to stop his research. Instead, the company announced that it would fund a research organization into alternate sources of the disease other than its own wastes. Uh, sounds like a monetary issue here. And one of the sorriest effects of the whole outbreak was that a decline in the catch of the area of 91% occurred. 91% is quite a large amount, and people began to complain, and twice the factory was invaded by flaming protesters, which resulted in an agreement between the company to set up a waste collection plant along the banks of the river and fishing industry compensation, <laughs> which they called sympathy money, and direct patient compensation for medical funds. Again, deciding to just make this thing so much worse than it had to be, these waste management plants um, were operated using this thing called the cyclation system, did almost nothing to prevent the leak of methyl mercury into the nearby waterways. And the purification tank, as called by the locals, was installed more as a social solution and did nothing to remove organic mercury. In fact, much activity on the part of patients and fishermen took place during this period, but nothing had a significant impact on the actions of the company or the coverage of Minamata disease in the national media. Now, a similar outbreak of this disease occurred about three years later in Niigata, Japan in 1964 and 1965. A factory in the area did the same thing that Chiso did and dumped all of its waste into the river, fish started dying, and it was noticed when cats went crazy and people started becoming infected and dying. And finally, on the 26th of September in 1968, 12 years after the discovery of disease and four months after Chiso had stopped production of acetyl acetylaldehyde using its mercury catalyst, the government issued an official conclusion as to the cause of Minamata disease. Minamata disease is a disease of the central nervous system, a poisoning caused by long-term consumption in large amounts of fish and shellfish from Minamata Bay. The causative agent is methylmercury. Methylmercury produced in the acetaldehyde acetic acid facility of Shin Nihon Chiso's Minamata factory was discharged in factory wastewater. Minamata disease patients last appeared in 1960 and the outbreak has ended. This is presumed to be because of consumption of fish and shellfish from Minamata Bay was banned in the fall of 1957, and the fact that the factory had waste treatment facilities in place from January 1960. Now that the f- government had finally realized the issue, it had taken measures to circumvent it, and from here on, the struggle focused on, and to this day still does focus on, the extent to which victims will be compensated by the factories. Not only did Tiso hide the effects from everybody, but it took the government of Japan 45 years to even begin thinking about imposing legislation on the issue. In 1995 and 1996, several Supreme Court cases involving sufferers of Minamata disease or relatives to the sufferers were conducted and these legislations were termed the final compensation of a Minamata. This, however, was also not true. 
This document, where the government sat down for the first time and legislated something be done, forgets to factor in that Minamata disease can be transferred through the placenta, and also that it did not solely perpetuate itself in waterways, for methylmercury bioaccumulates in tissues. Remember our discussion earlier. This led to further settlements of the disease being pushed in early 2000, where again, Chiso and the government sat down to decide just how much to allot to disease sufferers. In effect, Minamata not only suffered because of catch loss, a lot of people in the town itself were employed at Chiso, and when Chiso underwent all this legislation, a lot of money was lost, and Chiso Corporation was in effect forced to cut jobs. About 4,000 people were ended up without jobs. Most recently, however, Chiso Corporation has decided to split into two separate companies, both under the, both under the name of Chiso Corporation. One head of the company will deal with the production, and the other with patient compensation. In 1995, groups of uncertified patients accepted government-initiated settlement proposals, which led to redress measures in June 2010. Adopted for uncertified patients, these measures featured a lump sum of 2.1 million yen in 12,900 to 17,700 in monthly medical allowances to these patients. In total, Chiso has been forced to settle, even to this day, disputes involving victims of their chemical wastes. Several fishers in just 2007, names are omitted here for the privacy, reported that their catches of tuna and shirani base still had very high concentrations of methylmercury in them. Seeing this, China began to worry, for the waters between China and Japan are shared by both powers, but China too began having several isolated cases of the disease itself, and the disease concern became international. In total, the companies had to dish out a total of 48.5 billion yen in accordance with the Environmental Ministry of Japan, and cases that come later today will be subject to aforementioned quotas. Minamata today essentially represents the lengths to which government and corporations will go to hide the environmental degradation that they cause. The chief of corporation, while not doing its part to protect the environment at all, and even hiding its own experimentation results, um, this was completely just worsened when the government itself didn't even decide to act until 45 years later. And today we see all these cases going on involving methylmercury settlements because people are still complaining about the disease in their waters. And Chiso and the government still are doing all that they can not to compensate for these patients. So Minamata really, while yes, there were environmental consequences, most of it was actually human-based consequences. It's really, really sad, but it's true. All of these companies, especially Chiso, do their best to make the money that they need and to make the most profit. And in so doing, they endanger the environment, but sadly also human lives. And really don't give a crap if it's not them. And now to wrap this all up, the struggle in its entirety represents the low levels to which people and organizations will exploit their environment in order to stay in business or to earn just one extra buck, a concept which we know is the tragedy of the commons. The riverways were not intended to serve as waste sites, yet the company exploited it and totally backfired on them. Not only did they stab themselves in the foot, but they're responsible for over 2,000, and to this day, 2,265, people becoming infected, over 1,700 of whom had died of their disease. The companies got what they deserved for not only killing many, but for trying to hide what they did at all costs costs, only making it much, much worse. It's an interesting thing, human motive, but sadly it's always got something to do with money.